Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to wrap up the books that I read during the first half of August. I don't know how many more books I'm going to read, but I know that we already have like 10 and that's usually what makes me not want to film wrap-ups is when I have to wrap up too many books. So, let's get started. The first book that I want to talk about is NSFW by Isabel Kaplan. This was one of my most anticipated reads of the year and I'm kind of sad to say that it ended up being pretty average, pretty three star. It's a book that focuses on patriarchy, especially in the sense of like your first job at a Hollywood setting, this TV uh, network that the main character is starting out at. This is set in a pre-Me Too era. It's set in 2012, so some of what is happening doesn't seem like it's updated to the time that it is now post me too and i felt like a lot of the things that were happening in this book were things that like were not new or interesting or insightful because they felt so dated and like old ideas that i had already heard before there are definitely trigger warnings in here rape and sexual assault in work settings as well um but in general i just felt like it didn't really get somewhere that to me made it go to the next level to me it just felt kind of like a normal three star kind of a read and made me sad about it then after that i read bad sister and I really enjoyed my time with this it kind of has interesting reviews online because of the way that the sister does act in this story she is definitely like pushing boundaries and like the things that happen in here with her and her little brother are violent like there's definitely a lot of blood if you look through the the pictures there's definitely like a lot of accidents that happen here that are pretty intense and not something that I think today's kids would get away with this is from the point of view of the author like a lot of the things that are happening happening in the story are things from her own childhood growing up in the 80s and kind of like the more lackey way that parents were sometimes letting kids just do whatever they wanted um, and the kinds of things and that they would play with in the backyard and the kind of games that they would create that were sometimes pretty dangerous including like dumpster diving that they did to like find treasures interesting. I took away a lot from this and I did enjoy my time with it because of the like older sister and younger brother dynamic of it. It reminded me a lot of my own brother's uh, relationship with me growing up. Kind of how like we would always annoy each other but also we were each other's playmates and had such a fun time hanging out together and playing together and coming up with games together. I did enjoy my time with this and I gave it four stars. After that I read a book that I don't have with me anymore and it's Welcome to St. Hell, My Trans Teen Misadventure. This is a graphic memoir that looks into the life of Lewis Hancock as he transitions. It's set kind of in the beginning of the 2000s so I feel like his point of view is really interesting because it was set during a time when it was very uncommon for people to transition and for people to seek out information about transitioning. I loved the family dynamics in here and I also really enjoyed kind of like the point of view of Lewis as he's like narrating and, and illustrating this. What are they thinking now like looking back at what was then? It's definitely one that is for for older teens and adults I would say similar to genderqueer in the sense of how like visceral it is and how honest it is about depictions of like body dysmorphia and eating disorders and like how you look at your body but I do think that Welcome to St. Hell is definitely a lot less serious than genderqueer it's a lot funnier it's a lot lighter it's a lot more at like poking fun at all of the things that had to happen for him to get to where he is now. I also found really interesting that he's kind of like a TikTok star. He has like really funny comedic videos online and he's like he's got like YouTube videos as well. After that I read Blood Orange Night by Melissa Bond. I ended up giving this book three and a half stars. I did enjoy my time with it. I feel like I learned a lot about what it is like to become addicted to pills that are given to you by a doctor. She had a really big problem with insomnia. She couldn't fall asleep. She would sleep like, you know, less than two hours a night. She also had two very, very young infants, one with um, Down syndrome, and that made rearing them a lot more difficult. Um, I also found in here, like, the time that it was happening was during the Great Recession in 2008, so there were a lot of things going on about financial security going on at the family. Um, the husband in this book is horrible, and, like, every time that I was reading and hearing more about what was going on with the husband, I just wanted to yell at her to please leave. And I know, like, that's very, very difficult, Especially when you have two young children and like you're not okay with what's going on with your own body like you're not functioning at a normal level but it was very painful to read how her husband treated her and treated her disease that she was going through I am glad that she is doing much better she's still like 
to this day taking some of this because it has wrecked her brain so much and like she cannot function without it like she might have a seizure and die basically so that is really eye-opening and hearing that from the first point of view like the perspective of her going through it, it's very very interesting the way that it was written was a little bit overwrought and a little bit like overwritten she uses a lot of emotion and like the way that she describes things going on around her were not my favorite thing um i definitely think the writing is probably the most lackluster part of the story it's the way that she wants to tell her story so i also understand that after that i read a book i really enjoyed and that's everything i need i get from you how fun girls created the internet as we know it by caitlin tiffany i ended up giving this book four stars i read this on uh, a plane ride like back and forth and i was just constantly reading like non-stop and that usually doesn't happen with books i feel like i take a lot of books on trips and um, oftentimes they just sit in my bag. It didn't happen this time. I started reading and I just couldn't stop. This book is really, really fascinating, but this book is so niche. This book is not for everyone. This book is probably for like 50 people in the world, it feels like to me. I think that's what made it feel so special for me is because it felt like it was written for me. So this is a book of essays that kind of all overlap and go together about fangirling, about, um, you know, what that is like in the social media landscape and particularly she focuses on Tumblr as like the place where this disseminated in like the 2000 like late 2000s I'd say 2008 to maybe 2015 or so. The big focus here an example that comes up over and over again is One Direction the band. She definitely mentions other examples as well but I think that that is the central example that she uses because it is what affected her life and her fangirl experience online and what I really truly valued about this book is that it basically said that teenage girls passions and online activity is worthy of analysis and assessment. She takes a really meta and academic approach into looking at the real strange things that happen online like inside jokes and like taboos and things that are kind of shameful and not great about fandom analyzes and pokes at it and interviews people that were there it really was a nostalgic read for me because I remembered aspects of what she was talking about like things that happened eight years ago the amount of time that I spent reblogging things on tumblr were for me expressing something about myself having to do with different bands or TV shows or things that I was into at the time. If you are into kind of meta looks into pop culture, if you like One Direction, if you like Tumblr um, or if you use Tumblr growing up, I think that this would resonate but it's definitely not something that I think anybody could just pick up and like read a chapter and understand something about this moment. I think you do have to have kind of some background knowledge into it. It also was funny at times and I didn't expect that. After that I caught up with Heartstopper so now I've read volume 4 and volume 4 um, keeps looking into Charlie's eating disorder and how Nick tries to help him through his eating disorder to find help. I did really enjoy and I have enjoyed how this has become a more serious story. It's something that I think is really important for readers, especially like younger teen readers who are devouring the Heartstopper series and watching the TV show. I'm more seeking out Heartstopper because I enjoy like the really soft, sweet, kind of like hug aspects of it. The relatable aspects of it of like not knowing what to tell someone that you love them, that kind of a thing that happened here. But I do think that the tone that has been shifted in this series in the past two volumes has made it a lot darker. The first two volumes, what I was seeking out of it was like a comfort, soft, happy thing, something that would light my spirits up. Not to take away anything of like the importance of what, you know, kinds of themes and subjects that Heartstopper is dealing with. I think they are really, really important, especially like the fact that boys do have eating disorders and go through things like that and usually that's not something that's depicted in the media so I really value that but I do miss you know those kind of like butterfly early beginning of a relationship feelings. I read The Weird Sisters. I don't have that much to say about this story. Um, I read it because I wanted to read the author's new book that has just come out. This is her first novel. It focuses on three sisters as they are going back to where they grew up because their mother is undergoing cancer treatment, coming to terms with some problems that they are all three dealing with. They're all dealing with their own issues as well as wanting to deal and help 
her mom and the dad as well. I did enjoy this story to see kind of these family dynamics. This book is a little bit older, but if you like books like Eva Straub's books, um, where there's like big families and you're following all these different family stories and how the family all functions together, I think you would enjoy this. There's a lot of Shakespeare in this book as well that I didn't really expect that was enjoyable too. I think this book is funny and light. I feel like I would rate it to maybe three or three and a half stars. My nose is a little bit stuffed. We're dealing with it. After that, I finished Put <laughs> Every single time I say Putin. His name is Putin. Putin's Russia, The Rise of a Dictator. This is a graphic nonfiction look at some of Vladimir Putin's crimes in Russia and the people that are surrounding him, their crimes as well, and kind of like his worldview growing up, like what happened to him that caused him to become this kind of tyrant and very authoritative leader in Russia. I did value this book for kind of giving context and giving a, a very general background into basically Russian politics right now and how Russian politics are right now as a result of this man. It's very fascinating to me to see like all of the little things that have happened that I have definitely heard on the news but like seen laid out in this way like back to back all of these like poisonings and killings and things that are happening they are like mm, that is suspicious the timing of that and like the involvement with really sadistic and horrible leaders like the Syrian leader and you know all of the things that it's, this man is putting his hand in and this is pre-Ukraine involvement it's interesting to see that all laid out in one kind of volume there were parts of this that I I felt like could have been better like I didn't I don't know what I really expected but I guess I didn't necessarily expect the interjection of the author into like his thoughts and beliefs into what Putin is like and what that means for the world stage because I feel like his crimes kind of speak for themselves and I also felt like it was taking on this like moralistic like this is how you should feel um, when I feel like the reader looking at all of these things can come up to their own conclusions that this is a, a bad man that has a lot of power and is doing things for his own gain. I would say like some of the like the segues because we're dealing with so many different cases and things that are happening. Some of the segues did leave something to be desired. If you want to find out a little bit more generally about Russian politics, it is valuable. I gave this three and a half stars. Oh, I only have three books to go. I'm doing great. Then I read Isla to Island and this is by Alexis Castellanos. I love this book. I ended up giving it four stars. It is a completely wordless graphic novel about a young girl who is growing up in Cuba when Fidel Castro comes to power and what that does to the country really. She ends up leaving Cuba and she ends up going to a Catholic family. There's Catholic charities that take part in something called Operation Peter Pan that tries to get a lot of children out of Cuba and um, into other countries with Catholic families to raise them. And you can see kind of like the more black and white aspects of it. That's when she leaves Cuba and goes to New York. Feeling really uncomfortable in this new place, not really understanding the language of this new place and missing her family obviously and missing the culture that she grew up in and who she was before this had to happen to her. As she is there in New York, she starts slowly to come to her own and to become more comfortable and you see the pops of color that start to happen in the story that really show you that, that she is feeling a little bit more comfortable in her skin in this new place as well as like bringing in some of the cultural touchstones and the things that make her her having to do with food and music that she starts to show to the family that she is staying with as well and that really brings her a sense of peace and a sense of like color back into her life i talked about in my tbr how i didn't know like how the wordless aspect of it was going to show the story but i think it did a great job especially like in the facial expressions the pictures were really really beautiful and i do totally recommend this then i read flying solo by linda holmes this was probably one of the most enjoyable books out of this pile just because it was something that i needed i was looking for a hug reading especially being sick I wanted just something that would lift my spirits I really enjoyed my time with this story it's a story about a woman who is independent she's about to turn 40 she's going back to her town where she grew up because her great aunt passed away at the age of like 93 or 94 so she was pretty old and she had a, a long full life the main character Lori taking in her belongings and basically dealing with her belongings in her house and finds this random duck decoy that's like wood carved the way she finds it is kind of suspicious and mysterious and so she asks herself like why would it be here why would it be under these blankets why would it be hidden like this and that really takes her onto this like fun journey and adventure to figure out more information about 
her aunt, her great aunt Dot, and this duck decoy. She becomes friends with new people in the town. She also has her best friend growing up, her childhood best friend there that she talks to a lot. And she also rekindles this romance with someone that she used to date when she was in high school. He is a librarian as well, and so he's using kind of his librarian skills to learn more about this duck decoy. It becomes kind of this romp to figure out all of this information. There's also this character that really sends the story into like a con man situation and that was really really fun as well. This book it was really fun because of the vivacious dialogue. It was very lively. It was very fun and lighthearted. I really enjoyed the characters. I felt like they were really nice and wonderful. I understood their intentions but also like where their faults were and their flaws were and I really enjoyed Julia Whalen's narration of this as well in the audiobook. If you're looking for something just light and nice that still had some powerful meaning to it I think I would recommend this and I gave it four stars. And then last but not least was a nonfiction book called Roll Red Roll Rape Power and Football in the American Heartland by Nancy Schwartzman. I ended up giving this book three stars and I think that's because I felt like overall this book didn't really go places that I wanted it to go. It was a very good background look into the Steubenville case out of Ohio that happened in 2012 at the beginning of like social media and teens using social media. All of these kids were taking pictures of this girl that was overly intoxicated that then they raped and they were all really young teenagers they were like sophomores in high school what happened in that town like how did that town react especially because all of these kids were on the football team and the football team was so important to the town's identity basically especially in kind of like this rust belt post factory town so the author does take this very like background context let's look into like what this town was like before the 50s and 60s before all of the mills left in the 80s and 90s and like what the town is like now and how it's doing and who who's in power and why do people in America love high school football and college football? How does the patriarchy work in these kinds of towns where football is everything? I didn't find any fault with anything that she was saying. There were some times where she like really interjected some like political things or ideas that she had that I feel like were not really that necessary. She's a documentarian so she's not really a journalist per se. It was a bit too surface level. I do remember this. I was a sophomore in college. I just remember kind of like the culture and the conversation that was surrounding all of this online with my friends and like just the campus in general. So I remember kind of those conversations that were happening but I didn't really recall or I don't know if I knew that like the reason why this came to light was because of a blogger that was living in the town in the area that really pushed this information out. I didn't know that and there were a lot of other aspects of it like how did the police handle it and how did the coaches react that I didn't also know. I think all I knew was kind of like the general thing of what happened that night. I didn't hate my time reading this book but it's definitely really really down low on books that I've read on this subject which is a lot of them just in the way that it's it's written. And that is my whole stack. That is all the books that I wanted to talk to you about today. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Please let me know if you've read any of these books or would like to read any of these books now that you've heard me talk about them and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!